Amen. 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 Zechariah, the book of Zechariah, chapter number 4. If you don't know where Zechariah is, go to the very last book in the Old Testament, Malachi, and then back up one book. You will run into the book of Zechariah. Once you leave your Bible open tonight, I want to point out several things and deal with the subject that the Lord's given me and try to be a help and a blessing to you. Uh, when the Lord gave me this, it was a help and a blessing to me, and uh, I feel like it will be a help and a blessing to you. Zechariah, the book of Zechariah, chapter number 4. And uh, for time's sake, i got a ton of stuff to say tonight. And so for time's sake, we will read one verse. And uh, I'll, as a matter of fact, we'll read three verses. And uh, I'll try to give you the call the Lord's given me. Zechariah, chapter number 4. If you would look at verse number 8. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, the hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hands shall also finish it. And thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto you. Amen. Notice verse number 10. It will be our text tonight. Look at verse number 10. For who hath despised the day of small things? For they shall rejoice and shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel with those seven. They are the eyes of the Lord which run to and fro through the whole world. Let's pray. Our Father, God tonight, we're grateful that we stand on what never changes. Thank you for your people. Thank you for the good singing that we've heard. Thank you for your kindness, generosity, and blessing. Father, tonight we ask that you touch an unprofitable servant. Create an honest and do us in power. Give us clarity of mind and speech. And Lord, just as importantly, pray you speak to the hearts of your people. God, help us. Make us better. Uh, Lord, for the glory of God. Father, whatever you do for us, we'll thank you. We'll praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. And tonight, I'd like to use verse number 10 and focus on the very first statement made in verse number 10. Let's read it together, if you will. For who hath despised the day of small things. Here in our text, the Lord asks a question. He says, who hath despised the day of small things? From the context, we see that the Lord is interested in small things. And tonight, it's the word of the Lord. Verse number 8 tells us that it's the Lord that's asked this question. But tonight, I, when you continue to read the context, you'll see that the Lord is interested in small things. And from the text, we also see that God wants us to be interested in the small things as well. Amen. Tonight, many times, we focus on the big things in life. We're always looking for that big blessing. We're always looking for the new car or the new house or that great move of God. We want to see the Lord come down in power and in might and send a great sweeping revival. We want to see God use us and do the miraculous in us and for us. We're always looking for and focusing on the big things that the Lord can do. Tonight, preachers are interested in preaching that big meeting where thousands are in attendance and uh, they want the spotlight. And many times, our focus is on the big things. Right. But you realize tonight that God is interested in small things. Sure. Amen. Tonight, if you will make it a point to focus on the small things, God will give you the big things. Yeah, that's right. May I say this? You ought to write this in the back of your Bible. The way to get the big things from God is to do the small things well. That's right. Amen. Amen. The things we don't think mean a lot. The things that most people overlook. Right. The things we deem as unimportant or uninteresting. Right. And, and the things that seem insignificant. But tonight, if you're going to have the big things from God and the great things from God, it starts by paying attention to the small things. Amen. And learning to be faithful to the small things. Yeah. I mean, learning to do the small things well will lead you to the great things that you desire. Right. Tonight, may I say this, it is impossible, hear me, it is impossible to get the great things from God without doing the small That's things right. well. Yep. 
until you learn to do the small things well, you will never get the great things from God. Amen. Tonight, God is interested uh, in small things. There's proof of this throughout the Scripture. I'd like to take uh, just a few moments and show you two or three examples. There are, there are too, far too many uh, to list uh, and go through tonight. But I, would, I picked out two or three I'd like to show you. Take your Bible to 1 Samuel chapter number 17. 1 Samuel chapter number 17. For those of you who are unaware, in 1 Samuel, 1, 1 Samuel chapter number 17, it is the story of David when he kills Goliath. You will find that David shows up. Goliath has uh, uh, tried to pick a fight with Israel for 40 days. He said, send a man down here and we'll fight. If he kills me, y'all will win. If I kill him, we'll win. And, uh, and so for 40 days he does this. And finally David shows up and you know the story, David takes a sling and a stone and he goes and slays the giant, cuts his head off. Right. And uh, I mean the miraculous takes place. Takes place. God sends a great, great <coughs> victory. Uh, this is where David defeats the giant and, and gives Israel uh, you know, a phenomenal victory. Uh, everyone else was afraid, but David steps up and kills the giant. This one event in David's life changes the enti entire trajectory of his life. Right. It changes everything. As a matter of fact, flip over to chapter number 18. First, let me show you this before we get 17. Look at chapter number 18. Now, in chapter 17, David kills Goliath. But look at chapter number 18. Look at verse number 5. And David went out whithersoever Saul sent him and behaved himself wisely. And Saul sent him over the men of war, and he was accepted in the sight of all the people and also in the sight of Saul's servants. And it came to pass, as they came, when David was returned from the slaughter of the Philistines, that the women came out of all the cities of Israel, singing and dancing to meet King Saul, with tabrets, with joy, and with instruments of music. Verse 7. And the women answered one another as they played, and said, Saul has slain his thousands, and David his ten thousands. You will find that this one event in David's life makes him famous across the entire nation of Israel. Right. I mean, brother, he becomes famous almost overnight. Uh, once word gets out what David did and how his boldness, his courage, and, and it, they make a hero out of him as they should have, and uh, they are rejoicing over him, and he becomes famous overnight. He has become so famous in Israel that the women in Israel are singing songs about him. They have written songs about this man who has slain the giant. And the brother God elevates him in the sight of all of Israel and the entire nation. Uh, it, uh, it falls in love with David. Right. God gives David all of the hearts of the children of Israel instantly just like that. And brother God turns his life upside down. And God is fixing to make him king over Israel. And God is working in his life. And, and, and God is doing something special for David. It is obvious from the text that's what takes place. But you realize that David didn't start out to slay giants. When you read this text, you will find that David doesn't even know there's a giant over there. Right. And David has no clue of what's going on in the battle. He has no idea there's a Goliath. He has no idea the challenge has been uh, made to Israel for 40 days. He has no idea uh, uh, that, that God is fixing to do something great for him. You say, why did David show up then? Why is David at the battle? Now look at chapter number 17. Let me show it to you. Look at verse number 14. 1 Samuel 17, 14. And David was the youngest, and the three eldest followed, eldest followed Saul. But David went and returned from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. And the Philistine uh, drew near morning and evening and presented himself forty days. Now, now remember, David's at home. Notice this. Look at verse 17. And Jesse said unto David his son, Take now for thy brethren an ephah, this parched corn, and these ten loaves, and run to the camp to thy brethren. And carry these ten cheeses unto the captain of their thousand. And look how thy brethren fare and take their pledge. Do you know how David ends up defeating a giant? He starts out by just doing what his father told him to do. Amen. Listen, the, 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 what, what seems like something very, very small. Here, David, come here. I want you to take this lunch and carry it to your brethren. 
That's what I want you to do. That was his sole job. That's all he knew what was going on. He had no idea about a Goliath or anything else. He is simply trying to be obedient in the small thing. And because he is obedient. Now listen, David did not have the attitude of this is beneath me. I, I'm too good for this. Uh, no, no, no. David simply says, Father, if that's what you want me to do, that's what I'll do. It's a small thing. It's not a big thing. But I'm willing to do even the small thing uh, because my daddy told me to. Now hear me tonight. If you want to get to the great but you want to get to the great things. You've got to learn to be obedient to your father in the small things. And so David says, Dad, if that's what you want me to do, I will do that. And you know what David right. is at this point? David's a delivery boy. All yeah. he's doing is carrying lunch to his brothers. Right. I mean, listen, he's not in the battle. He's not some great general. He's not in charge of anything. He's just a young boy. And, and his daddy sends him to carry lunch to his brother. So what David said, all right, Dad, if that's what you want, I'll be faithful in the small thing. And so he takes the lunch. Over there he goes. Next thing you know, in the midst of doing the small thing, right. guess what happens? God shows up and gives him victory in a great thing. And hear me tonight, you never get to fight Goliath, you never get victory over Goliath until you learn how to tote somebody else's lunch. Well, you learn how to tote somebody else's lunch and just be faithful and just be consistent and just be obedient to your father. That's when, in the midst of that, what is seemingly mundane, what is seemingly boring, what is seemingly makes no sense, what seemingly seems like not a big deal, right in the midst of that, David shows up and God shows up. Up, and God puts the thing together and now David has just slain the nine foot six inch giant and now he is famous all over Israel but he didn't start out slaying giants he started out just being faithful and told lunch to somebody else hear me tonight until you learn or to talk somebody else's word you'll never get to slay any giant right. Right. Amen. Yes, sir. now that's good preaching no matter who you are here's the thing with Stephen Everybody wants to slay giants. Sure. Right. But nobody wants to tote lunch. Right. That's right. The reason we ain't got no giant killers is we ain't got no lunch toters. That's right. And David said, if this is what my daddy wants me to do, that, and that's all he wants me to do, then that's exactly precisely what I'm going to do. David doesn't grumble. He doesn't gripe. He doesn't complain. Right. You know what he says? All right. And he grabs this, he grabs the, them boys' lunch, and off he goes. Right. And he's just saying, I'm going to be obedient in the little thing. I'm going to do what my father said in the little thing. And little did he know that he was plunging himself headlong into becoming the most famous man in all of Israel. But it didn't start with a giant. It started with total lunch. And when it was willing to tote somebody else's lunch, God made him famous in all of Israel. And if God did it for David, God will do that for you. Amen. Now, That's good. we have got to learn to be satisfied just being an errand boy right. yeah. and go deliver some lunch to somebody else. That's right. Amen. And tonight, David in his humility doesn't grumble or growl. He, he, doesn't, he doesn't complain. He doesn't think delivering lunch is beneath him. Right. He's just willing to obey his father in small things. And he takes his lunch to his brethren. Now, David is faithful to, and to be obedient in the little thing. And that's how he got to the place where God gave him the great thing, victory over the giant. Yep. Now, God always expects us to do the little things well right. before he'll give us the great thing. Sure. Right. He was just trying to be faithful to his father and, and, and to the task that was given him to do. And when he was faithful to the little thing, God gave him the great thing. Right. Uh, tonight, every preacher wants the great sermon, that deep theological stuff that you know, people go, oh my God, I never saw that. Uh, listen, every preacher wants that, but very few preachers are willing to just sit down and read your Bible every day. Right. Uh, listen, some preachers only read your Bible uh, so they can find something to preach. I don't read my Bible so I have something to preach. Here's what I do. I read my Bible because God told me to read my Bible. And then you know what I do? I preach out of the overflow. Whatever God shows me while I'm reading my Bible, then I end up making sermons out of it. But I don't read my Bible just so I have something to preach. And if that's the only time you read your Bible, preacher, you're going to be in a mess because God ain't always going to give you something to preach. But listen, here's what you do. You read your Bible because you're supposed to read your Bible and keep your heart right. And if you'll do that, God will give you something to preach. Tonight's message, you know where it came from? Reading my Bible. And as I read my Bible, uh, God just said, here, look at this. Point this out. Well, let me show you this. And uh, brother, you know why? Because I am willing to do the little things so that God can give me the good things. Now hear me tonight. I've heard, I've heard people say this, and, and listen, I don't, I don't feel like I know nothing 
buzz about that book. I really don't. I don't feel like I'm a great preacher. I don't feel like I, I have some great insight. I don't feel like I'm some great theological mastermind, as it were. But what little bit I know about doctrine, what little bit I know about dispensation, all that stuff I've talked to the years, you know where it comes from? It came from doing the little thing. Just reading my Bible every day. And as I read my Bible and got familiar with my Bible, God began to open the Bible and began to show me the things out of the Bible. There's no way I could teach the stuff I've taught. All the dispensations, doctrines, prophecy, end time events, none of the book of Revelation verse by verse, almost all the New Testament verse by verse. There's no way I could teach that stuff until I learned to do the small things. When I learned to do the small things, then God would give me more and more of uh, the bigger things. And tonight, if you're waiting on the big thing, I got you say, I'm just waiting on God to give me something big. God said, I'll give you nothing big until you learn how to do the small things. Our focus is out of life. Right. That's right. We're focused on the big thing. Yeah. When God wants you to focus on the little thing. Sure. Right. And if you'll focus on the little thing and learn to do it well, then God will give you the big thing. That's right. David didn't take it upon himself to fight a giant. God orchestrated it. Amen. God worked that out. God guided the rock that landed in Goliath's forehead. Right. It was the Lord that did all that. That's right. David would just focus on the little thing. Matter of fact, when he shows up, he ain't even ready to go to battle. Right. He ain't got no armor. He ain't got nothing. I, listen, brother, he, don't even, he didn't even bring his own rocks. All he had was his sling, which he probably kept on him. And hear me tonight. I, and listen, he wasn't even prepared for that. But because he was faithful in the little thing, God presented an opportunity, and God blessed him, and God gave him the big thing. Amen. Right. Amen. Now, everybody wants to win a thousand people to the Lord, but they don't want to witness to their wages. Right. Right. Focus right. on the little things. And God will let you see and do the great thing. Be faithful to read your Bible. Be faithful to pray. Be faithful to church. Be faithful to witness. Be faithful to do right. right. Many years ago when I was at New Manor, many, many years ago, for those of you who have been up there, the sign, the road is here, and, and as you're driving down the road, uh, if you look over to the right, the sign is over here. Now, why they did it the way they did it, I'll never know. But they put that sign about 30 foot in the air. It says New Manor Baptist Church. It's 30 foot in the air. Underneath the sign that says New Man Baptist Church, there is one of those signs that you put letters on. Underneath that, it's about 28, 26, 28 foot in the air. My job as a young preacher at New Man was to change the letters on that sign. That was my job. So, may I say this? Sam Bellini had the same job back in the day. That's long before I showed up. Sam's already passed from the time I got there. But that was my job, was to change the say on the sign. Uh, so once a week, I would drive a half hour to New Manor. I would drag the, the ladder out, set it up on this side, and climb the ladder, pull all the letters off the side, take the ladder, spin it around on this side, pull all the letters off on this side. Then I would go and put all those letters up, and all the letters up, and then I would, I, I would come up with a new saying. And some of y'all know me, it made my pastor nervous because I come up with all kinds of stuff. And, uh, I, but one of, my, one of my sayings was, if you were on trial for being a Christian, is there enough evidence to convict? I mean, I come up with all kinds of uh, Walmart ain't the only saving place. I, I'm a I mean, I come up with some doozies. Uh, so much my pastor would get phone calls. And he'd call me and say, Preacher, what you put on that sign? I said, I put Walmart ain't the only saving place. He'd say, oh. And, uh, and so uh, that was my job. I would drive over there, put the side, I uh, put the ladder up, pull the, pull the letters off, flip it over, pull the letters off, lay the letters out, organize everything. I take my new say and make sure I laid all the letters out, not for one side but for both sides. Then I scoop up these letters and I climb all the way back up there, put the letters in, and get it just right. Then I move the ladder and then I have to climb back down, get the other letters, and come back and put all the letters on this side. It take about an hour once a week. I got. To the place, brother Willie, where I hated it. Right. I hated it. Yeah. it drove me nuts. If you ain't never climbed a ladder thirty foot in the air for and been, stay on that thing for about an hour uh, in the middle of July in Western North Carolina, sure. you've missed a blessing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I did that for two years, wow. every week. You know why I did it, even though I hated it? Because that's what God gave me to do. That's right. I didn't start out traveling the country. I didn't start out in evangelism. I didn't start out as a pastor. I didn't start out doing the big things. You know where I started out? Changing the sign once a week. Nobody knew my name. Nobody would call me to preach. Nobody would uh, give me their pulpit. I wasn't preaching revivals. I wasn't traveling as an evangelist. I was just a young 
preacher. I, nobody even heard of me. And you know what I did? I decided then, if I'm going to do something for God, I want to be faithful to it. So every week, week in and week out, for two solid years, I would change letters on the side. Every week, even when I didn't want to go. You know what I said? It's important to be faithful. i got to be faithful. i got to be faithful. If God can't trust me I to fix this sign once a week, how can God ever trust me? How can give me anything better to do? So never mind, I was going to be faithful. After two years, doors started opening. People started calling. And they had to come and preach. And before you know it, I, here I am, pastoring the same church all these years. But I didn't start out right here. I started out by being faithful in the little thing. And as I did the little thing, God blessed me and God used me. And the more God could trust me, the more God let me go. We're worried about the big stuff. Right. God's worried about the little stuff. Yeah. Right. Tonight, our focus is wrong. Right. Focus on the little. Get good and learn how to do the little things That's well. Right. Amen. And God will take care of the big stuff That's right. in your life. Can I show you one more quickly? I want to show you another one. Take your Bible. Let me, let me back up and say this. It's almost like God is trying to make a point. Let me show you a verse before we move from 1 Samuel 17. Look at verse number 14. And David was the youngest. And the, and the three elders followed Saul. It's almost like God's trying to make a point that he used the youngest and the small thing, David. He didn't use his three big brothers who were strong and in the war and who were warriors. No, he used a small thing to take care of a right. big thing. God's trying to, to illustrate the point for those that are paying attention. God is interested in small things. It is the small things that bring victory. It is the small things that, that will, will cause you the greatest victory. And tonight, if you're going to have victory, you've got to learn to do well at the small things. Not it ain't always the big thing that's going to bring you victory. It's this, all the preparation work that goes on behind the scenes. The times when nobody sees you pray. The times when nobody sees you read your Bible. The times when nobody sees you witnessing. The times when nobody sees you vacuuming the floor. The right. times when nobody sees you clean the fellowship hall. Those little things that seemingly are insignificant that you never get a pat on the back for. That nobody ever notices. Those are the things that God uses. And then all of a sudden you get a great victory. And people are saying, well, how come they got a great victory? Because they did a bunch of stuff. All that little stuff that you don't know nothing about. Uh, that God saw. That God watched. And that God used. And so he can trust them with a bigger victory. Because they were faithful to the small right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Now, let me show you another one quickly. Take your Bible turn to 1 Samuel chapter number 9. You realize it's the little things that will make you or break you. Tonight, Song of Solomon 2.15 says this. Take us the foxes. The little foxes that spoil the vine. Tonight, it's that little stuff that will ruin you or it's that little stuff that will make you. Amen. Tonight, I don't care about the big stuff. Right. Neither does the Lord. The Lord cares about the little stuff. Tonight, the Lord cares about uh, you walking through the parking lot seeing a piece of trash, picking it up and sticking it in your pocket. Right. Laying it in and throwing it out. Amen. Those little things that make a difference. Yep. You'll either be made or you'll either be, you'll either be made or broken by how you, how you treat the little thing right. when it comes to your spirituality. Now, look at 1 Samuel chapter number 9. I want you to, I want you to, to see here's, here's the the uh, king Saul being anointed as king over Israel. Listen, Samuel anoints him. Matter of fact, let me show you that first. Look at look at First Samuel chapter number ten. Flip over to chapter, chapter number ten first. Look at verse number one. Then Samuel took a vial of oil and poured it upon his head and kissed him and said, "Is it not because the Lord hath anointed thee to be captain over his inheritance? God anoints Saul as king over Israel." In chapter number 10. But you realize Saul doesn't start out that way. Go back to chapter number 9. Look at verse number 3. First Samuel 9. Three. Look at this. And the asses of Kish, Saul's father, were lost. And Kish said to Saul, his son, 
Take now one of the servants with thee and arise. Go seek the ass. Saul doesn't leave the house expecting to be anointed king. Right. Right. He leaves the house being obedient to his father right. in a small way. Mm -hmm. He said, son, three of our asses have been lost. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to take one of the servants and I want you guys to go out and look for them. That's all Saul was doing was trying to be obedient to his father in a small thing. And so Saul takes one of the servants and he goes to search for these three lost asses. When they get out there, look down at verse number 5. And when they were coming to the land of Zuf, Saul said to his servant that was with him, Come and let us return. Lest my father leave caring for the asses and take thought for us. Verse 6, And he said unto him, Behold now, there is a city there is in this city a man of God, and he is an honorable man. All that he saith cometh surely to pass. Now let us go thither, peradventure he can shew us our way that we should go. Look at verse number 14. And they went up into the city, and when they were coming to the city, behold, Samuel came out against them, for he go up to the high place. Now the Lord, told, the Lord had told Samuel in his ear a day before Saul came, saying, Tomorrow about this time I will send thee a man out of the land of Benjamin, and thou shalt anoint him to be captain over my people Israel, that he may save my people out of the land of the Philistines. For I have looked upon my people because their cries come unto me. Did you hear that? Amen. God already had the thing worked out. Right. Saul also had to do was be obedient a little thing. And when Saul was obedient in the little thing to go look for these three lost asses, God already had a spot picked out for him. And so when he gets over here, guess what happens? He leaves looking for asses. When he comes home, guess what? He's the king of Israel. Right. Right. You know why he gets anointed here? Because he was obedient to his dad here right. in the small right. And t Again, until you learn how to be obedient in the little thing, you're never going to get over here to the great thing right. where God can do something with you, something marvelous, something miraculous, something out of the ordinary, something unusual. You, Everybody wants the miracle. But brother, very few of us are willing to go out and look all over for three lost asses. Right. And, but you know what Saul said? If that's what my father's given me to do, I want to be faithful. I want to do right. No, it's not a big deal. No, there's not a lot of fanfare. No, people aren't going to chant my name. No, they're not going to uh, put my name in lights. No, I'm not going to have a world, world renowned fame. No, I'm not going to have any of those things. But I want to be obedient, right. even in the small thing. Right. And when he would learn to be obedient in the little thing, God brought him to a place where you give him a big thing. Amen. Amen. That's right. Tonight, my question for you is this. How you doing on the little stuff? That's right. That's good. You say, I'm waiting on a big thing. No, 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 no. God, you, you're going to keep waiting. Right. The reason God ain't going to do the great thing is because you ain't going to do the little thing. Right. You want to do the little thing, trust God with the big thing. But Samuel Saul had no idea he was going to be king. He had no idea. He was just simply being obedient to little thing. He was just simply trying to be obedient to his father and do the best he could in a task that seemingly was unimportant. In a task at the end of the day really didn't matter. But he said, I want to be faithful in the little thing. And when he was faithful in the little thing, God had a great thing over here waiting on him. Right. Now, if I ask tonight how many wants a great thing, everybody raise your hand. But tonight, if you want the great thing, You've got to learn to do the small thing well. Right. Amen. Stop focusing on the big thing. God will take care of the big thing. Right. In both these stories, you know who's responsible for the big thing? The Lord. Amen. Yeah. Right. The Lord did the big thing. Yeah. By the way, you can't do the big thing. Ain't no sense you worry about it. Right. Let me tell you what you better do. You better focus on the little thing, the thing you can do. Amen. Right. Taking out the trash, cleaning the toilet. Being faithful to read your Bible. Right. Being faithful to hand out a tract. Being faithful to pray. Being faithful to serve. In any capacity, nothing's beneath you. And just be willing to do the little thing. And if you'll focus on the little thing, God Himself will take care of the big thing. Right. Right. Amen. Amen. Can I show you another one? Take your Bible uh, and turn to 1 Kings chapter 17. 1 Kings 17. In the midst of doing the small things, both these men ran headlong into the big things that God had prepared for them. Now again, everybody wants a big thing. 
But if you want the big thing, you've got to learn to do small things. You've got to learn to be faithful to small things. Right. And if you learn to be faithful to small things, then God Himself will take care of the big things. Yep. You don't get to skip the small thing and go directly to the big thing. Right. That's what we want. We want to step over and around, and not necessarily sometimes because we think we're too good. We just don't think that matters. Right. We don't think that little thing is important. So we ignore it and we go around it and we bypass it and we try to get to the big thing. But hear me, you're not going to get to the big thing until you learn to deal with the small. Right. Verse 8 and 17. Look at verse number 19. And he said unto her, Give me thy son. And he took him up out of the, and he took him out of her bosom and carried him up into a loft, where he abode, and laid him upon his own bed. And he cried unto the Lord. And said, O oh Lord my God, hast thou also brought evil upon the widow with whom I sold her by slaying her son? And he stretched himself upon the child three times and cried to the Lord and said, O oh Lord my God, I pray thee, let this child's soul come into him again. And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah, and the soul of the child came into him again, and he revived. You say, preacher, that's a big thing. You're exactly right. I dare say any time God raises one of your youngins back to life, yeah. that qualifies as a big yeah. deal. I would dare put that in the category of a big thing. But you realize tonight, this widow woman didn't start right there with a big thing. And you say, where did she start? Look at the first part of chapter number 17. Let me show it to you. Uh, look, look at verse number 10. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering her steps. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel, that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks, that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. You say, How did she get her son raised back to life? It started out by giving the preacher a biscuit. Right. Yeah. 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 She was faithful in the little thing. Yeah. And when she got faithful in the little thing, God blessed her and raised her son back to life. That's right. See, without her feeding that preacher a biscuit, giving him a drink of water, there is no resurrection from the dead for her child. Right. Right. That's right. She didn't get the big thing until she learned to do the little right. thing. Look on, look on. Look at verse number 13. And Elijah said unto her, said unto her, Fear not. Go and do as thou said, but make me thereof a little cake first. So notice that. A little cake first. And bring it unto me. And after, make for thee and for thy son. Did you see that? Yeah. Elijah said, Go on, do it. God's going to take care of you. Look at verse number 13. And uh, I'm sorry, verse 14. Thus, for thus saith the Lord God of Israel, The barrel bill shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail, until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her house did eat many days. Yeah. Can I say this? She did one little thing. She fed that preacher a biscuit and gave him a drink of water. Yeah. Do you know what God does for her? God does two big things. Yeah. Number one, He sustains her and does a miracle and doesn't let the middle barrel run dry. Yeah. God doesn't let the cruise of oil fail, nor does He let the mill barrel run dry. You realize that's a big thing. Amen. How did she get the big thing? She fed the man a biscuit. She did a little thing, and God said, I'm going to sustain you and do a miracle, and the cruise of oil will not fail, and the mill barrel will not run dry. How does she get the miracle? Right. She fed the man a hungry jack. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Y'all know what a hungry jack is? That's a wampum biscuit. Yes, sir. You know what a wampum biscuit is? It's kind of you walk on the counter and open them up. Open them up. It's a wampum biscuit. She gave the man uh, 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 some, some uh, hungry jack. He got him down and plate come back. And because she's willing to give that, some of y'all remember that old commercial yes, meeting, some of y'all should have She gave a man a biscuit and a drink of water. And God said, because you were doing, willing to do the little thing, I'm going to bless you and I'm going to sustain you 
the preacher and your boy and not let the oil waste and not let the barrel run dry. And God does a great thing because she's going to do the little thing. And then God does another great thing for her. When her boy dies, God raises that sucker back to life and gives him back to his mama. You say, how did she get those two miracles? She gave him a business. I dare say that's a pretty good trade. Yeah. 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 For the price of a biscuit, her and her house got to eat and God sustained them and they didn't die. And then when one of them did die, God raised that sucker back, back to life. Right. All of that for the price of a biscuit. Amen. Amen. You see, all through this book, you'll find where God is interested in the little thing. While we are interested in the miracle in the big thing. God says you ain't getting the big thing till you learn to do right with the little That's right. Yeah. I'm going to show you one more. I'm going to show you one more. Take him out to 2 Kings chapter number 4. 2 Kings chapter number 4. This book is filled with stories like this. Filled with stories like this. People who started out just focusing on the little thing. And when they got busy for God focusing on the little thing, God showed up and did the big thing. You'll find a whole lot of folks in this book who did not focus on the little thing, neither did they get the big thing. All throughout the scripture. Let me show you one more. Second Kings chapter four. Let me say this before we read this text. Stop focusing on the big. Start focusing on the little. Right. Let God take care of the big. He's the only one who can anyway. Right. You better right. focus on the little stuff you can do. Look at Second Kings chapter four and verse number eight. And it fell on the day that Elisha passed to shoot him, where was a great woman, and she constrained him to eat bread. And so it was, that as oft as he passed by, he turned in thither to eat bread. And she said unto her husband, Behold now, I perceive that this is an holy man of God, which passeth by us continually. Let us make a little chamber, I pray thee, on the wall, and let us set for him there a bed, and a table, and a stool, and a candlestick. And it shall be when he cometh to us that he shall in, that he shall turn in there. Let me stop right there and say this. Here's a woman, Elisha passes by all the time, and she said, I perceive that that's God's man. I'll tell you what, let's do it. She talks to her husband, said, Let's just get him a little place to lay down. Maybe they cleaned out the little place beside their house, and she dusts real good, lays a rug out. They get a bed, and a candlestick, a little desk for him to sit at, and try to make it a little comfortable place as he's traveling through. He can have a place to lay down, a place to rest. That's all they do. It ain't like they built him a palace. All they did was probably clean out a, a side room of their house and make a little place for him so, the, so that he'd have a place to rest when he passed through. That's what she does. You with me? Look up. Uh, look at verse number 11. And it fell on a day that he came thither. And he turned into the chamber and lay there. And he said to Gehazi, his servant, Call this Shunammite. And when he had called her, she stood before him. And he, and he said unto him, Say now unto her, Behold, thou hast been careful for us with all this care. What is to be done for thee? What is thou be spoken for to the king or to the captain of the host? And she answered, I dwell, among, I dwell among my own people. And he said, What then is to be done for her? And Gehazi answered, Verily she hath no child, and her husband is old. And he said, Call her. And when he had called her, she stood in the door. And he said, About this season, according to the time of life, thou shalt embrace a son. And she said, Nay, my lord, thou man of God, do not lie unto thine handmaid. Look at verse 17. And the woman conceived and bare a son at that season that Elisha had said unto her, according to the time of life. Amen. How does she get the one thing that she wants? How does she get that very thing that her heart is desperate for? You know how she does it? She does a small thing for somebody else. She's just trying to make sure the preacher had a good place to lay down when he passed over. Seemingly not a big deal. But see, the stuff we don't think is a big deal is a big deal to God. Why would God give this woman a baby and do a miracle in her life? Because what she thought was not a big deal, God said it's a big deal. Right. Yeah. And it mattered to the Lord yeah. that she was willing to be a blessing to somebody else and do a small thing. Maybe they didn't have a lot of money. Maybe they didn't have a, a, you know, a great place to put it. But she did what she could with what she had. Right. 
And she did a little thing. And God said, hmm, that's a big thing to me. Yeah, that's, right. that's, right. that's stuff that nobody else pays attention to. Yeah. God said it's a big deal. So much so that God rewards her and gives her the desire of her heart. Amen. If you've been praying about some big things and God ain't come through yet, let me ask you a question. How's your, how's your spiritual life concerning small things? Right. If the small things are out of whack, you're waiting in vain on the big thing. Right. You get the small things in order, and then God will show up and bless the big thing. Amen. What's that big thing you want? You say, oh, I've been praying, I've been praying, I've been seeking. Well, let me ask you something. If God ain't answered it, how are you going on the little stuff? Right. Because if this ain't right, you ain't going to get over it. Amen. You better learn to focus on this stuff. Trust God with that stuff. See, what we want to do, we want God to handle this, and God let us handle this. Right. Give me, give me, give me, give me. We want the big thing. I'll handle this. When God said you got it backwards, That's right. I'll handle this. You handle it. That's right. You see how our thinking is messed up? We're worried about that and ignore this. God's worried about this. And he ain't worried about that because he can fix that anytime. Right. Right. So how's the little things in your life? How's your Bible reading? How's your faithfulness? How's your prayer life? How's your church attendance? Right. How's your witness? How's all those little things in your life? Right. And until you get those little things right, you're worried about this and God's worried about that. Right. Right. Now listen, I want you to show you something else. Not only does God give her what she wants, but look, look down at verse number 18. And when the child was grown, it fell on a day that he went out to his father, to the reapers, and said unto his father, My head, my head. And he said to, the, to a lad, carry him to his mother. And when he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees till noon, then died. Uh-oh. The boy that God gave her died. Right. Do you know what she does? She says, send one of the young men. Tell him to saddle the ass. i got to go see that preacher. She rides out to see Elisha. When she gets out there, she, she falls on the ground and wraps her, her arms around his, around his knees and says, that boy that you promised me, that boy that you said God's going to give me, God give him to me, and now he's dead. So Elisha sends Gehazi, his servant, on ahead of him. Then Elisha comes running behind. She says, you got to come. you got to come. This boy's dead. And so Elisha goes over there. Look what happens. Look at verse number 32. And when Elisha was coming to the house, behold, the child was dead and laid upon his bed. He went in there for her and shut the door upon them twain and prayed unto the Lord. And he went up and lay upon the child and put his mouth upon his mouth and his eyes upon his eyes and his hands upon his hands. And he stretched himself upon the child and the flesh of the child waxed warm. Then he returned and walked in the house to and fro and went up and stretched himself upon him. And the child sneezed seven times and the child opened his eyes. And he called Gehazi and said, Call this Shunammite. So he called her and when she was coming unto him, he said, Take up thy son. Two miracles. First, she got a son, and then God raised him back from the dead. Right. All because all she did was tie up some little old place in her house and just said, We'll put a bed, a candlestick, a little desk there. That way, when the preacher comes by, he'll have a decent place to She was willing to do the little thing. Amen. When she got worried about the little thing and did the little thing, God showed up, not only did one miracle and gave her a son. He did two miracles and raised him from the dead. Right. That's right. God did two great things for the price of one. Yeah. There is no telling how many great things God will do. You got it right. If we would just get yep. busy Amen. about the small. That's right. Right. Listen to me. Listen to me. This is what Jeremiah 45 says. Seekest thou great things for thyself? Seek them not. God don't want you worried about the great things. He can handle the great thing. He don't need your help with the great thing. Right. Here's what God wants you to focus on. The little thing. Being faithful to church. Be faithful to read your Bible. Be faithful to pray. Right. Be faithful to witness. Be faithful to live right. Love Jesus. Serve the Lord. Get focused on the minor, the little tiny issues that everybody else seems to think are unimportant or insignificant. There's no spotlight. There's no pat on the back. There's no uh, There's no parades. Your name's not going to be up in lights. But this is the thing that heaven notices. Not that. Right. Amen. Stop worrying about that. And focus on this. Amen. Be faithful to give. Yeah. Right. Everybody wants God to bless them financially, yeah. right. but very few want to focus on the little thing of giving out of what you got. Right. 
Right. You say you got $20, then throw two in the plate. Yep. Right. Right. God do more with your $2 out of faithfulness than he can with 2000 from somebody else. You're right. Yeah. God can use it. Right. Learn to be faithful in the little things. Listen, if you won't if you won't give when you're making a hundred dollars a week, you ain't gonna give when you're making two thousand a week. Right. Right. If you won't honor God with two dollars out of twenty, you ain't gonna honor, honor God with two hundred out of two thousand. Right. And see, you're worried about this big thing. Well, listen, you're fretting and worried about this thing. God's not interested in this thing. God can fix this thing anytime He wants to. And if you're wasting your energy and your focus on this, wait, really? You ought to just focus right here being faithful and giving and serving and laboring and having out of track and reading your Bible and praying and being faithful to the small things. Right. And when you get faithful to the small things, God pays attention and God sees what you're doing. And then God shows up and gives you the great thing. Right. Yeah, right. Yep. Tonight, let me ask you this, and I'm done. How you doing on little thing? Right. How's the little stuff in life? Right. Well, I've been praying that God would do this and God would do. Yeah, but how you doing about this? Right. That's good. I'm praying God sends sweeping revival. That's a great prayer. Y'all pray. I want you to. Y'all pray for a great sweep of revival where thousands are swept into the kingdom. Y'all too. But that prayer ain't going to do a whole lot of good if you get right over the little stuff. <clears throat> I could do this all night. Yep. Show you story after story after story where God took somebody who was willing to do the little stuff. And then they got faithful and consistent and we're willing to do the small things well. That's when God showed up. That's right. And did a big thing. You will find in each one of these stories there's no grumbling, there's no griping, and there's no complaining about doing the work. Yeah, that's right. See, it's not enough to do them. You've got to learn to do them well. Right. You've got to learn to do them with a good heart. You've got to learn to do them expecting nothing in return. That's right. You gotta learn to do them just to be right. obedient to your father. Right. Amen. And just do what God told you to do and be faithful in the small things. Now, if you're going to be faithful in the small things, he'll take care of that. Right. I promise. Right. This is what I've learned. A lot of guys aren't willing to, to pastor a church that runs 20. Yeah. Or they take one runs 300. They don't want to pastor 20. Right. Can I be honest? I remember a time when we didn't have but about 12. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had 29, had a split, and lost 17. Ran 12. Yeah. And I preached to them just like I'm preaching to you. Right. Right. Yeah. And I will preach the same to 2,000 if, if God gives them to us. But I've learned God can't bless our church, Brother Mike, if I ain't willing to preach to 12. Right. Right. Why would right. God give me any more than 12 if I won't even preach to 12? Right. That's right. If you won't do right by little, that means God can't trust you with much. Yeah, that's right. But if you learn to be faithful with your 12, whatever that 12 is, if you'll be faithful and be consistent with that, whether it be teaching Sunday school to three, yeah. if you'll be faithful to that and pour your heart into that and keep your heart right with that and you'll do faith with a little thing, then God will bless you and let you have a bigger thing. But why would God give you the big thing when you I'm just saying, man. Yeah. Our thinking's backwards. Yeah. Yeah. I'll show you verse after verse after verse. You know what David said? Dad, what do you want me to do? If it's toting somebody's lunch, I'm the guy for the job. I'll gladly do it. I'll take care of it. Right. And you know what David does? You read 1 Samuel 17 when you get a chance. I ain't got time to get into it. You'll find that, that David runs yeah. over there where he's going. Yeah, amen. He doesn't kick the dirt and say, I can't believe Dad made me do this. I, I, you know, uh, he could have got somebody else. I think he's just picking on me because I'm the youngest. And he don't kick dirt and stick his lip out all the way over. The Bible says he ran. Yeah, right. His heart was right when he did the small thing. Can I be honest? You know what? Can I give you another one quickly before we go? You'll find that David is made king over Israel. Do you know how David starts? Minding a few sheep. Yeah. On the Judean hillside. When he goes to the battle in 1 Samuel 17, his brother says, and who did you leave those few sheep with? He just had a handful of sheep, but he was faithful to those few sheep. Amen. 
Yeah. When a bear comes, he kills it. Yeah. When a lion comes, he kills it. God sees his faithfulness over a few sheep and said, I can trust him with all the sheep of Israel and I can make him king. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Why? Because David proved his faithfulness over a handful of sheep. See, it's all that stuff you don't think is a big deal. Right. That's the stuff God's looking at. That's right. Of course. Now everybody wants, oh, I want to see God blow through here and see thousands saved. And yet, absolutely, I'm with you. But you realize we can't do that. Right. God's got to do that. Right. Yeah. That ain't our business. That's right. God's business. Right. Amen. But I tell you what we can do. We can be faithful to witness to our friends, our co-workers, our waitress, those that are around us, a little girl at Walmart, a little girl at the convenience store. We can be faithful to hand out a track and witness and do the little things. And if, if all of us will get, get, get our hearts and our minds wrapped around this concept right. and all begin to do the little things and focus and learn to do the little things well, then God will show up and do the big thing. Right. Amen. Yes, sir. So I ask you this as Nicole Connick. How you doing on the little stuff? Okay. How you doing on reading your Bible? How you doing on praying? Right. How consistent are you? How faithful are you? How you doing on witnessing? While you're fretting over the big stuff, you're ignoring the little stuff. Tonight, you can't fret over the big stuff and focus on the little stuff at the same time. You're either going to A, ignore the big stuff and trust God with it so you can focus on the little stuff. Or, you're going to continue to fret over the big stuff while ignoring the little stuff. you got to make a choice tonight. What are you going to focus on? I've shown you four clear, distinct pictures in the Old Testament where the Lord said, focus on the little stuff. I can give you 50 more if you want. But tonight, the proof is in the pudding. And listen, when Saul gets dethroned and gets in trouble with the Lord, you know what the Lord says to him, 1 Samuel 15, if you're taking notes? He said, when thou was little in thine old he said, when you were focused on the little, I blessed you. Right. But somewhere along the lines, you got your mind off the little, started focusing on the big. He said, but when you were little in thy own eyes, that's when I blessed you. That's when I used you. That's when I anointed you. That's when I made you care. But somewhere in Saul's life, he got his heart and his mind off the little things and started focusing on the big things that he could not control anyway. You know what happened? He ends up goofing up on God. God ends up ripping the kingdom away from him. Because he's worried about something that wasn't none of his business no way. Yeah. It's God's business. Stay focused on the Lord. So tonight, as we stand, I ask you this. How you doing on the little stuff? How you doing on Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night? How you doing on coming to Sunday school? How you doing about having out a track? How you doing about reading your Bible? How you doing about praying? How you doing on the little stuff? Amen. Tonight, we're going to pray. Maybe you want to come and ask the Lord to help you focus on the little stuff. You can't focus on the big stuff and the little stuff at the same time. you got to pick one. And the only one God's going to bless is you focus on the little stuff. Amen. Let's pray. Father, tonight thank you for this book. What a treasure. What a treasure this book is. And Father, tonight I realize I've not even scratched the surface of the depths and riches of this book. But Father, I certainly thank you for what you gave me. I'm certainly grateful, Lord, for this truth. Father, I pray you to help us, Lord, not to be mindful of the big stuff. You'll take care of the big stuff, just like you did for David, just like you did for Saul, just like you did for Elijah, the little widow woman that helped Elijah, just like the little woman who helped Elisha. You took care of the big things. Lord, help us not to focus on the big stuff. Help us to focus on the little stuff, the day-to-day -day stuff, the seemingly insignificant, the stuff that seems not to matter, the mundane, the boring, the stuff we don't put a lot of stock in. Help us to focus on those little things. Lord, and we know, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that you'll take care of the big things. But Lord, if we won't be faithful in little, how could we ever be faithful with much? And so Father, help us change our thinking tonight. Help us to focus on the little things. Help us to learn to do the little things well. When we learn to do those little things well, Lord, you'll, you'll take care of the big things in our life. 
Pray you help us. Have mercy on us. Deal with us. We'll thank you and praise you. Whatever you do, we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, our hearts and minds clear tonight? Amen. Anybody else still convicted? Amen. amen. Right. I'm glad I ain't going one. Amen. All right, let's bow our heads when we dismiss. Brother Aaron, if you want to dismiss. Dear Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for being kind to us. I want to thank you for mercy and grace on us. I pray that you would help uh, us to take heed to the, to the message tonight, dear Father God, Lord. And uh, let us realize that if we'll focus on the small things, then you can, take, you, you can focus on the big things, dear Father. Lord, I pray that you'd uh, uh, keep us safe as we travel back to our homes. Lord, you bring us back the next one hour. Lord, Lord that we be faithful. Uh, keep us faithful to the small things this week, dear Father God. Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen.